In this video, we're talking about the options wheel strategy. You hear it on YouTube all the time. What is it? How does John play the options wheel strategy? We do it all the time. And I'll tell you what, you're going to love this video because I'm going to show you how I'm going to play the wheel strategy on one of my favorite stocks. Looking to have a new challenge where maybe, just maybe, I can knock down. Well, you're going to have to watch to the end of the video. Hey, look, stick around. I know you're going to like this one. Hey, welcome back, everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Well, hey, look, today we're talking about a very popular strategy on YouTube. You know, if you go to YouTube and you search Covered Call Wheel Strategy, this has become a very popular strategy. I did not know over the past three years, four years that I've been doing this, that I've been doing the wheel strategy. And I do it all the time. It's something where if you get your experience with the covered call and the cash secure put and you're playing your favorite stocks, this doesn't even have a name. This is just what we do. But it is called the wheel strategy. And we're going to talk about what is the wheel strategy. And I'm going to give it to you straight talk style and uh, sort of cut right to the chase. Because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how I play the wheel strategy and how I plan to play the wheel strategy. Because for me, it's one of those games. I, I, I love games or, or things that motivate me to keep me in the game. I want to stay active in the strategy because I know if I'm in the strategy, I'm going to have success. Man, I have been doing this and I feel super comfortable with it, super confident. And we're having the kind of success that is life changing. So today we're talking wheel strategy and uh, we're going to use Microsoft as an example. I'm going to go through the bullet points of the uh, wheel strategy real quick. And I think you'll come up to speed really fast. But we're going to talk about some of the things that I would do uh, if I'm playing Microsoft in the wheel strategy. So, so first of all, we're talking cash secure puts, covered calls. The cash secure put, very simple. We put up the cash to buy somebody's shares at a price we pick for a time frame we pick. They pay us a per share premium, right? We're putting up the money to buy somebody's shares. They better pay us because that money is sitting on the sidelines for that time frame. And that time frame can be a couple weeks, a month, whatever time frame you pick or expiration, you know, that's going to be up to you, the cash secure put seller putting up the money so you better get paid. Now you're putting up that money to buy somebody's shares. So somebody can assign you their shares. Always remember when we enter a trade, the minute you enter that trade, you have to be prepared to manage the trade. Never assume that you won't be assigned the shares. Many of those YouTube videos talk about the likelihood of profitability. And what they do is they usually uh, start at the money. And then what they'll do is they'll they'll use Robinhood or some other uh, options uh, options chain or trading platform that will show they usually show the delta and the delta is the perceived profitability for that strike. Okay, so if Microsoft is trading at two hundred and twelve dollars, right? And I pick remember it's a cash secure put. So if I pick the out of the money cash secure put of say two hundred dollars, right? Somebody can assign me their Microsoft shares at two hundred dollars. Maybe the profitability on that in a 30 day trade is 70 to 80 percent. Really, really low delta. Chances are you won't be assigned the shares. So you'll see YouTubers talk about that profitability. But for me, if we're going to do the wheel strategy, we want to own the shares. Okay. Because the wheel strategy in its most basic form is we start step one by selling a cash secure put. We collect the premium and then ultimately we are assigned the shares, right? They're going to give us those shares at the price we pick. Now that's step one, the cash secure put. The covered call is when we own the shares and we are then gonna give somebody the right but not the obligation to take them from us for a price we pick, that's the strike, and a time frame we pick, the expiration, and we get paid a per share premium. Notice we are selling premium. We do not buy call options. We do not buy put options. We are sell, sell, sell. We sell the cash secure put, and as the trade plays out, we are assigned the share. Now, you may not be assigned the share. Microsoft may go higher or sideways, and you're never assigned the shares. Well, you're going to repeat and rinse. You're going to keep that premium. 
that trade expires worthless, you're going to do it again until you're assigned the shares. If you picked a strike price that is close to the at the money. So Microsoft's trading for uh, 212 right now. We go ahead and sell the 211, right? We probably going to be assign the shares, right? Somebody's buying insurance where they can't lose any more than $211 a share. So if we get the expiration, we could be assigned the shares. So fast forward to that moment in time. Now we're assigned the shares. We have been given the premium, right? So if the premium was, let's say seven bucks, we're keeping that $7. That $7 times the shares is going to be that profit, that premium profit. So now we're assigned the shares and we have the shares at 211. The idea is we are now going to write a covered call. We now write the 30 day covered call and uh, we might want to write an out of the money strike. We collect the premium and we let that trade play out. So let's go to the Microsoft chart here just to show you how somebody might really play this. We sell the cash secure put here and we get paid a premium for that. Then as the stock travels, possibly lower, we get assigned the shares. So at that point, we are going to write the out of the money strike, get paid again. As the stock goes higher and our shares are taken away, what do we do? We collect that profit from the share uh, taken from us. We keep the premium and we're going to then sell the cash secure put again. Okay. So we did the cash secure put here to get our original profit. Then we wrote the covered call here to get our second profit. As the stock finished above our strike price, our shares are taken and then we sell the next cash secure put. And now as the stock trades, we're doing this. We're repeating and rinsing. Okay. That's the idea. And the idea is super simple. You have this wheel strategy. You start with that cash secure put and then the shares are assigned, right? You get the shares given to you and now you're going to write the covered call and then the shares are taken. And then we're going to do this again. You're collecting premium along the way, depending on where you uh, selected your strike prices, obviously depends on the premium you're going to collect. And if you look at Microsoft right now, this is a uh, one month, 30 day at the money put. So Microsoft's trading. And if you sold the, the at the money put, you would get about $7 and 55 cents, a hundred shares at $755. You might want to maybe sell the 210, right? Get your shares a little bit cheaper. You'll get $645. You see it? The $6 and 45 cent premium. Now let's say 30 days from now you're assigned the shares. Let's hypothetically look at what that would pay. We're looking at the 112 strike and notice the one deviation out, the 215. By the way, if I said 112, I meant to say 212. The 215 strike out of the money is paying $6.65. So now your shares would be taken away at two fifteen. You're pocketing the stock appreciation. You're getting six dollars and sixty five cents in premium. So imagine these two trades. Your very first trade, if you pick the two ten strike for the cash secure put, you're assigned the shares at two ten. You're given six dollars and forty five cents for that. So what's your true cost basis? It's about two hundred and four dollars. Fast forward, you're now selling the two fifteen strike, and you're getting six sixty five for that. You're turning this wheel of profit. And I'll tell you what, you're getting experience. See, this is the key. You're active, you're managing it, and you're getting your experience. And when you get your experience, I'm telling you, man, you can manage trades better. You'll make quicker decisions and you'll be more profitable. Let's uh, finish this up by talking about the stocks we want to buy. Obviously, all of the golden rules apply because if you're going to be assigned the shares, I don't care if you're doing a wheel strategy or some other hybrid, you're going to be assigned the shares. You are going to be holding that risk. So if you are doing this on very suspect companies or ETFs, then you are going to be in a world of hurt if you're assigned the shares. So you better make sure you're adhering to the gold and rules. And we know what those are. We're looking to uh, have high volume stocks or ETFs because when we have high volume stocks or ETFs, we have action in our strike prices, right? We have more open interest, which means people are there with limit orders waiting to buy our options if we need to bail. Okay. And higher volume means tighter bid and ask spreads. So you can get out on the pennies versus finding yourself in a less liquid stock or ETF and your bid and ask is wide, potentially very wide, 20 cents wide. And then, you know, that can really be the difference between making a profit and not. You also want to make sure your stocks or ETFs have weekly options, because if we have weekly options, that means we have a lot 
lot of volume. Usually we have frequency where we can really pick these different strike prices for profitability. And uh, I just like options that trade weekly because I have more options. And I don't mean more options. I mean more options in terms of buying back options, selling options. You get my point. Okay. No pun intended, I guess. We are selling puts and selling calls. We do not buy. If you see anybody on YouTube talking about the wheel strategy and they talk about buying options, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay. Understood. Uh, of course, it depends on where you're at. You need to have the money in your account to buy the shares. Okay. Uh, we don't want to not have the money in our account and you're writing a cash secure put to collect that fat upfront premium, putting yourself at risk excuse me, where you don't have the money to cover it. Okay. I've seen videos where guy doesn't have enough money in the account to cover the hundred shares, but they're telling him to pick that strike because it's a fat premium. Well, of course it's fat. It's closer to the money, but he doesn't have enough money to pay for it. Okay. We want to make sure we have the money. Um, and definitely if you're playing margin, be careful, know your margin risk. So the wheel strategy is one that I do all the time and I didn't even know it. I mean, I literally buy a stock, write a cover call, buy it back, write the next one. I sell a cash secure put. We do this all the time. Now, how would John play the wheel strategy? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And uh, to be honest with you, this is on the fly. I am actually thinking of doing this right now. You know, I've been using UPro. Now, part of the wheel strategy is to buy a stock that you're willing to own. Now, most of the time you'll see these wheel strategy videos using the SPY or the TQs, pardon me, the QQQ, because they're huge ETFs and the ETF is mimicking the index. So even on the most nasty of down days, it's not going to move much, right? If you're playing a Microsoft and they come out with some seriously bad news, you could be screwed but they'll use the SPY because it's it meets all of the criteria. But the reality is, you know, some people might want to play stocks or leverage ETFs to make more premium. Well, for me, that's what I'm going to do. Because I have played UPro and I know UPro like the back of my hand. In fact, I know UPro and how it trades better than most of the stocks I trade. So I'm going to go ahead and use UPro for a 30 day wheel strategy. And uh, without breaking out the numbers here, I'll just give you a little flavor as to what they pay. A 30 day at the money, right now, you, you pros trading for, uh, what is it, 52X, okay? Let me just bring it up here real quick. You pro is trading for 52X. Now, actually 54, wow. <clears throat> so I put up the money for a thousand shares of you pro, right? I better have, at least enough money for that thousand shares. So with it trading at 54.79, I'm gonna scroll down and take a look at what a cash secure put pays for this, okay? Right now, a cash secure put at about 54X, you're gonna get about $3.60. So if I did the wheel strategy on UPro, we're talking 1,000 shares. I got to pony up, right? I got to have this on the sidelines, at least uh, $54,000, okay? Now they're going to pay me $3.60 per share. So that's going to be $3,600 deposited into my account for the very first step of the wheel strategy. Now the idea is 30 days out, wherever the stock ends. Let's say UPro finishes below. Okay. They assigned me the shares. Now I'm going to write the next 30 day covered call, probably at the money. And as you could see, again, these are hypothetical, you know, and at the money covered call 30 days out pays about $3 and 45 cents. Well, now I'm going to write that out of the money strike or at the money strike for $3.45. That's $3,450 in the account. And we're going to repeat and rinse, repeat and rinse. And we're going to manage the trade. Okay. That's uh, sort of what I'm thinking about doing right now. Keep an eye out for those trades. They're coming because as you know, I uh, shut down my one week, $1,000 challenge. I'm going to go I'm now going to go for a one stock, one month, $5,000 challenge. And uh, that one's coming out. And I may do it with the wheel because right now, the way I see it, I could actually do this uh, where I could collect $5,000 a month using uh, a stock like UPro. Hey, it's 3X leverage. You have to know about the leveraged ETF. And if you don't, well, all I could tell you is you can get snapped off real quick. Hey, look, I'm going to leave it right there. Hope this video helped you out. Hope. It got you interested to check out what the wheel strategy is. And if you're doing the wheel strategy, let me know. I absolutely love it when I get that feedback. I want to hear about your success. I'm going to leave it right there. Be safe, be healthy, most important, be lucky. Until next time, may all your covered calls be profitable.
check out what the upgraded C2P dashboard is all about, I want you to go to my page, C2P dashboard, click on upgraded C2P dashboard, see if there's anything there that you think will up your game. What I'll tell you is this, recently my charts of the week have absolutely been knocking it down. In fact, my most recent chart with Home Depot, unbelievable buying opportunity. Hey, look, I don't make predictions, I don't make recommendations, but when you look at the charts and then you act on that, right, you have your financial education, you've done your homework, the charts are telling you a story, and then you act on it, man, it's a great opportunity to have success. So if any of that interests you, just go over to the website, check out the upgraded C2P dashboard.